All right, I think we are live now. Dang, my eyes look really red. Woo! Sorry. Um, so, uh, thank you for joining us for our um, Facebook Live um, Bible study. I'm glad you could join us. We'll give folks a few minutes to uh, to join. Um, yeah, I don't have any super big announcements. Um, we are still um, in discussions um, about when it will be great for uh, us to safely gather again together in worship. Um, but uh, we've been talking about some different ideas, some things that we'd like to do, and uh, I'm sure that we will get an announcement out soon about some, some things there. Um, yeah, so if you're joining us, um, I see we have one person on. You can put your name down there in the comments. That way I know who's here. It's always good to, to know who's with us. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have a lot of scriptures today that I kind of want to cover, so I think I'm just going to jump into it. If uh, someone misses, uh, of course, you can always rewind it and watch it later or you know, and catch up, or you can watch it later when it's posted on our YouTube channel and sent out with the church newsletter. All right, so um, let's do this. Um, I'm going to open this with a word of prayer, and then um, we will... Oh, you know what? I forgot to do... Hold on just a second. I'm going to do something here. Uh, all right. Okay. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> I always like to cross-post this. Um, to other pages so we get more viewership. Um, so I forgot to do that. I just did it. All right, let's pray and get started. Gracious God, we thank you so much for uh, the gift of life, your goodness and your mercy, your great love for us. Lord, we ask your spirit to come and move amongst us and that each person who hears these words would be touched by them uh, with a word from you because we all desire to hear from you uh, that our lives might be more enriched and that we might enrich the world and the lives of those around us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, yeah, I want to jump in because I have a lot of scriptures to cover. Now, I, I want to just point out real quickly that I uh, struggled with the, our, the um, question for consideration today. I, I said that the question is, how can I be a better Christian leader? And the reason why I struggle with that is because um, the idea of, of put, uh, l labeling it as, as a, the leader as a Christian um, can mean different things to different people. Um, and the so the first two set parts on leadership, um, it was just generic things on leadership that, that you don't have to be a Christian to follow. Um, for instance, um, a leader looks for potential, not polish. A leader gives credit where credit is due. And of course, you know, I use scriptures to support all of those, particularly in the life of Jesus and in great leaders like Joshua, who um, has been a focal point of each of these studies. Um, but you can follow those without being a Christian. The reason why I, I wanted to add the word Christian leader for this one is because I think there are some things that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ that are... Um, different than um, than if you're just if you're not a Christian um, now the reason why I say the word Christian can be problematic is because um, Christians view what it means to be a Christian differently um, <laughs> for instance I've been accused of not believing the Bible which um, I always get a big chuckle out of because I'm like well I I don't believe in the Bible I believe in Jesus Christ and um, the scriptures point to him, and he said that to the Pharisees. He said, um, you search the scriptures, um, and, uh, but they point to me. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I think, I think it's problematic that for a lot of, of Christians, particularly uh, here in the United States, we, um, we have a quadrinity. We believe in God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, and the Bible. Or we have a trinity, and we say we believe in God. I actually I went to a Bible study once where I heard someone say this. He said, well, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, and I believe in the Bible. He didn't even include the Holy Spirit. And it's problematic when we say we believe in the Bible, because um, what we're saying is, um, I believe 
um, in a particular understanding or interpretation of scripture or uh, of the uh, particular interpretation or understanding of the Bible um, because the Bible says a lot of different things and, and people interpret it differently. And I'll give you a good example. So uh, there's a lot of people at Lyft who um, have come from the holiness Pentecostal movement um, which um, women have to wear long skirts and don't wear makeup or jewelry um, you know, usually have their hair up in a bun um, and that's what for them it means to be a good Christian is you know in terms of how women are um, which will be very problematic for Pastor Jean Day who, who loves to dress up and look cute and you know do a, get herself all done up and um, and look great and so you know people people view what it means to be a Christian differently so when I say what how can I be a better Christian leader I want you can take that to mean what your understanding of a Christian is um, but we're going to talk specifically about five different points that um, if you are a Christian and uh, that you should follow as a leader um, and so we're going to jump into those all right so our first scripture is Joshua 8 18 and um, the first point is that a leader trusts God to make a way for them. The leader trusts God to make a way for them. Uh, so we're going to look at Joshua 18, uh, verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 18. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the sword that is in your hand toward Ai, for I will give it into your hand. And Joshua stretched out the sword that was in his hand toward the city. As soon as he stretched out his hand, the troops in ambush rose quickly out of their place and rushed forward. They entered the city and took it at once, set the city, uh, and took the city at once. So um, the reason why I wanted us to look at that scripture in terms of Joshua as a leader, and we've been looking at his capture of the city of Ai um, for the last three weeks, is that he did as God directed him. Um, he trusted God to make a way to deliver the city of Ai into his hands, and, um, and he did as God directed him. Take the sword in your hand and lift it up, and, and then God delivered the city into his hands. So, um, number one, a, what makes a, how can we be better Christian leaders? Well, we, we trust God to make a way for us, and that's, um, that's pretty foundational. We, we trust God to make a way for us. Um, number two, a leader spends regular time with God. A leader spends regular time with God. Uh, I, I want us to, I want to use an example of someone who I think is a really good Christian leader. Now, I, I'm going to say just I don't necessarily agree with his theology in all areas, um, but I, I, I admire him as a Christian leader and his emphasis on prayer and spending time with God. And the reason why a leader spends regular time with God is that in order to uh, do number one, which is uh, to trust that God will make a way for, for you, you have to hear from God. You have to hear that what that direction is. Um, Joshua very clearly heard from God, lift up the sword that is in your hand. And for him, for him to be able to hear that, he had to be in regular relationship and communication with God. Um, so uh, Jim Cimbala, who started the Brooklyn Tabernacle, and if you're familiar with the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, it's interesting. I, it's such a huge choir. They've you know sold out uh, Radio Music City Hall in New York and sold um, hundreds of millions of albums worldwide. That they, just their choir is phenomenal. That um, you know, uh, I just figured most people have heard of them before. But uh, lately, I've been asking people, and they're like, "No, I've never heard of them before." So if you haven't heard of them, um, uh, the Brooklyn Tabernacle is a huge church in um, New York City. And they're doing just amazing work. I mean, people are being set free from, from drug addiction, alcohol addiction, um, marriages are healed. Um, uh, just, I mean, it's just, uh, I think it's just amazing the work that they're doing. And so um, he, when they started out, their church was um, in a broken down building, just a handful of people. Uh, Jim tells in his book, uh, Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, which is um, what I'm, I'm reading from here uh, about his experience hearing from God. But uh, he was preaching one Sunday morning, and literally the pew that um, some people were sitting on cracked in half and spilled the people out onto the floor uh, while he was preaching. Like, that's how desperate that, um, uh, in bad shape that his um, church was in. Uh, but he trusted God and, and continued to seek God, and, but he was, he was a little discouraged at the beginning, and, 
And so he had developed a cough and he, um, uh, his in-laws had a place down in Florida and he went down there to sort of recover, spend a couple of weeks down there. And he went out on a fishing boat and he was kind of out there on the boat all by himself. And um, he just sort of was praying, not sort of, he was praying to God. And, um, and this is what he says uh, in Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire about the, how Brooklyn Tabernacle got started. He says, then quietly but forcefully, in words heard not with my ears, but deep within my spirit, I sensed God speaking. If you and your wife will lead my people to pray and call upon my name, you will never lack for something fresh to preach. I will supply all the money that's needed, both for the church and for your family, and you will never have a building large enough to contain the crowds I will send in response. Now, for our number two is a leader spends regular time with God. And the reason why we spend regular time with God is so that we can hear from God and get direction from God to do what God desires us to do. Um, and so Jim is a great example of that. And that's such a beautiful promise from God. You know, he didn't see it. He couldn't see it. He was in a building that was literally falling apart around him. Um, but, but today, um, what, 40 years later, the Brooklyn Tabernacle is this a huge church that's uh, changing lives in amazing ways. Um, so, um, a leader hears from God. Now, in connection to that, I wanted us to look at Genesis 4, 25 through 26, just because Jim points something out of his book that I thought was really awesome. So, Genesis chapter 4, verses 25 and 26. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another child instead of Abel, because Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. At that time people began to call on the name of the Lord. At that time people began to call on the name of the Lord. So what's really poignant about that is in that word that, that Jim heard from God, where he said, um, if, you're, if people will call on my name, um, if my people, if you will lead my people to pray and call upon my name. And he points out that um, uh, before the Jewish people were, were, Jew, were called Jews, or before they were called Israelites or the Hebrews, um, they were known as people who called upon the name of the Lord. People who called upon the name of the Lord. And I thought that was just a, an amazing picture of, of, of God's people. You know, that we be known as people who call on the name of the Lord. And so leaders, as an example for in Jim's life, leaders are people who lead others to call upon the name of the Lord. That's actually not one of my points, but we can add that, right? That um, leaders are people who not only spend regular time with God to hear from God, but they lead others to do the same thing. So number three, oh, well, actually, I also wanted to look real quickly at Jesus' prayer life, because Jesus was like uh, the most amazing person of prayer, right? Most amazing leader, example of leadership I think that we have, and he had an amazing prayer life. In Matthew 14, uh, verse 23, and we'll just look at this, this really quickly. Uh, and after he had dismissed the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. So Jesus spent a lot of time alone in prayer. And then if you, we're going to flip over real quickly to Mark chapter 1 and look at verse 35. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. And it says, In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. So early in the morning, before the sun came up, when no one was awake yet, and it was quiet and still, he got up early to pray. So um, leaders spend time with God in prayer and they receive direction from God and hear from God about what God desires them to do. Um, so uh, uh, number three, uh, as part of that, is that they're, they're not leaders, good Christian leaders don't, um, don't just pray and think, oh, well, I threw it out there, we'll see what happens. They believe that God hears their prayers and that God um, will answer their prayer in some way. We talked about that in length when we looked at prayer, um, in our new Bible studies when we did did those on prayer. But um, number three, a, a good Christian leader knows that God hears their prayers. Their prayers, And we're going to look at James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8 real quick. So turn to James chapter 1. We're going to look at 5 through 8. 
If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Now, um, this, is, this is not name it and claim it. Like, oh, if I believe it, you know, I want a new, brand new Mercedes. God's going to give me a brand new Mercedes. That's not at all what James is saying. Number one, he's, asking, he's saying that we have to ask for wisdom. And I think wisdom means discernment and, and um, making wise choices. Um, uh, but that's, and ultimately, I think that's what a good Christian does, is that they do make good, wise choices. Uh, but what he's saying there is that when you pray, don't just throw it out there and be like, oh, well, I hope God hears me, and God, I hope God answers my prayer. But you're, you're earnestly in praying with intention. God, this is important. Um, this is something that will bring about your good in the world and your love in the world. This is something that will change lives. Um, and, you know, that, that that's a prayer in earnest and that you know that that's in line with what God desires for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So um, uh, a good Christian leader knows that God hears their prayers and is going to answer that prayer um, to bring about God's good in the world. And that's the qualification there. All right. So um, the other thing, too, that when we spend regular time with God in prayer, um, and seek God and hear from God, um, then um, we can proceed in boldness to do what God has called us to do. And we're going to look at Acts. But real quickly, I want to share a story with you. So um, I have um, a best friend. My, we have been, we've known each other for 20 plus years. And um, I have, you know, she's one of those friends that we can talk. She lives in New Mexico. And uh, we can not talk for like two years, and then we talk, and it's like we just pick up where we left off. And oh my gosh, we talked last night for over two hours, and we laughed and cried, and it was just, it was a blessing, it really was. Oh, she's just the most wonderful friend I've, I've ever had. And um, it, she um, is one of those unique people who truly, truly prays to hear from God. And... Um, she was sharing a story how uh, she uh, had seen this woman walking, or she walks in their neighborhood on a regular basis, and she saw her dropping her granddaughter off at school. This was pre-COVID, obviously, <laughs> dropping her granddaughter for school, and she introduced herself and said hi, and uh, Christy was dropping off her kids, and um, uh, she uh, said, you know, hey, let's get coffee sometime and, and talk and get to know each other, and the woman's like, yeah, that'd be great. Well, she uh, um, saw her uh, uh, pass this woman sitting on a bench, and uh, uh, she stopped and, and said hello to her, and, and, and she said that she was waiting. The woman said, oh, I'm, I'm waiting for my son to come pick me up. I haven't seen him in a while, in, in over a year, and he's coming to, to pick me up, and um, we're going to uh, visit and, and, and catch up, and I'm so excited to see my son. Well, as, li as uh, Christy was leaving, she... She heard that small, still voice of God speak to her and say, um, go buy her a cup of coffee and bring it to her. And so Christy's like, okay. So she was on her way to the grocery store. She knew there was a Starbucks at the grocery store where she was going. And so she, she um, went to get her a cup of coffee. And then she, but she, she heard again, um, get two cups of coffee get three cups of coffee, one for you, one for her, and one for her son, and buy them some pastries to go with their coffee. And she was like, okay, Lord, but like by the time I get back there, she's probably going to be long gone, you know, but she's like, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to do what God asked me to do. And um, uh, sure, sure enough, when she got back, the, the woman was, was actually standing at the window of a car talking to somebody in the car. And so Christy pulled up behind the car and she got out and and um, the woman was talking to her son, and uh, so they hadn't left yet. And um, she, she said, hey, I, I brought you some coffee and some pastries. And the woman was like, oh, Christy, that was so sweet. And then uh, she handed one to, the, to her son, and the son said, you brought me coffee too? And, and she was like, yeah. And, and then the woman started crying. And she said, uh, my son was coming to pick me up to take me to get coffee. 
but he was just telling me that he didn't have any money to buy coffee and wanted to know if we could just go back to my house. And she said, and here you show up with coffee and pastries to boot. You know, what a, what a blessing. And that was because, you know, Chrissy was obedient to hear because she spends regular time with God and to hear that voice and to be obedient to that voice, she blessed somebody. Um, I, I just, yeah. Anyway, so what an example of a good Christian leader who listens to God and does what God asked them to do um, and was and bold to follow through on, on, on that request, even as though it sounded crazy. So that's point number four is a leader is bold. And what I want us to look at for that is Acts chapter 4, verses uh, 23 through 31. Acts chapter 4, verses 23 through, four, uh, 23 through 31. Acts chapter 4. All right. After they were released, so uh, Peter and Paul had been um, uh, put in prison, and the, the, the believers had been praying for them, and they were released from prison, and and they joined the rest of the believers um, and who were, had been praying for them. They went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, actually I take it back, they weren't in prison. They were detained by the Sanhedrin. This is when they, they healed the man. Anyway, sorry. Okay, so uh, they were released by the Sanhedrin and went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them, which was, do not speak in, the name, in, in this name of Jesus anymore, which they said, well, we're going to do what God tells us to do, so we're not going to do that. Um, so they were bold. Uh, when they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them, it is you who said by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had, had determined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with boldness. And grant to your servants to speak your word with boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and, uh, and perform them throughout uh, through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. So, a good Christian leader is bold. And, and I don't mean like that they run over people. Um, they're, they're bold for what the, doing God's goodness in the world, doing the things that God desires them to do. Um, so a good Christian leader is bold to do the good work of God in the world. Um, one of the things that, uh, and I mentioned Jim Simbala before, but he his comment on that particular passage in Scripture, which I, I was, um, which I thought was very helpful. But he said, you know, they didn't pray for safe shelter, they didn't pray uh, to hide from the officials that they had just been released from, they didn't ask for the Holy Spirit to sort of protect them so that as they laid low until sort of like the heat passed, so to speak, you know, till the heat was off of them. Just the opposite. They prayed, Lord, make us bold. Um, and, uh, and, when, and, and God did. And they, it says the Holy Spirit came in power and they spoke with boldness. So a good Christian leader speaks uh, God's good word in boldness into the world. Number five, a leader, a good Christian leader has confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit. So the, the, the disciples that we just, in the scripture we just looked at in Acts, they trusted the power of the Holy Spirit to move them in boldness to do the work that God had called them to do. So a good Christian leader has confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and the scriptures I wanted us to look at uh, briefly on that are Luke chapter 3. So quickly let's look at, I say keep saying quickly, I mean I'm, I'm trying to keep it under 30 minutes. But we got time. Um, let's look at Luke Chapter 3, Mark and Luke, chapter 3, verses 21 through 22. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in, boldly, in, in bodily form. In, the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice from heaven said, You are my Son, the Beloved, and with you I am well pleased. Um, 
So, uh, a good Christian leader has confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus prayed, the, whole, the heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit came down. Um, I think that as a good Christian leader, we want to expect, and this kind of goes back to the scripture in James, that when we pray, we expect God to hear us and to answer our prayers, uh, to do the good work that God has called us to do. Uh, Jesus, Jesus knew that as he prayed, God was going to answer and respond, and the heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit descended. So we trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to, to, um, to move and to act when we pray. And the last one connected to that I want us to look at is Acts 13, verses 2 and 3. You know, if you go through the book of Acts and look at what the Holy Spirit does, because the book of Acts are the acts of the apostles, of the birth of the church, you're going to see amazing work of the Holy Spirit. All through Acts, the Holy Spirit's doing this, the Holy Spirit's doing that, the Holy Spirit's revealing this, the Holy Spirit's people telling people to do this and telling people not to do this, very clearly giving direction about what to do and not to do. Um, so a good Christian leader, I mean, they are connected to God through the power of the Holy Spirit to give them direction to know what to do and what not to do. It's so, so critical if you want to be a good Christian leader. And again, this comes back to why I said this is different from just being generic qualities of a good leader. This is specific to a good Christian leader. You know, we, we seek God's direction and hear from God and desire to do what God asks us to do. Um, and gives us the power through the Holy Spirit to do it. So Acts chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lu uh, Lucius, Lucas, Lu <laughs> Lucius, thank you, Lucius of Cyrene, uh, Manon, a member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So the Holy Spirit provides direction when we pray, tells us clearly what to do and who to do it with. Um, and I think that's just essential. If you're going to be a good Christian leader, um, man, listen to what God wants you to do. Um, and if you feel that, like, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say this. I don't want to sound too churchy, but sort of a check in your spirit, like this, sort of almost like the Holy Spirit is saying, "Don't do that. Don't say that. Um, listen to that instinct that God has given you through the Holy Spirit." Um, so that's it. Uh, let me just recap real quickly. A good Christian leader. How can you be? How can I be a better Christian leader? One, um, trust God to make a way. Number two, spend regular time with God. Number three, know that God hears your prayers and will answer. Number four, a leader uh, trusts in God to, to be bold. And number, that was number four, number five, a leader has confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit. So those are the things that can help us be better Christian leaders. Uh, because there is a difference between how a Christian leader operates and just, um, just a, a leader who's not a Christian in the world. Um, so anyway, I hope that was helpful. Um, I did not receive any prayer requests this week, um, but we, we want to continue just to pray for those who have COVID and those who are impacted by it. We want to continue to pray for Lyft and all our members at Lyft. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, this, I, I, at the nursing home, I work in a re the rehab part of the nursing home and in the long-term care unit. And I was um, visiting with um, one of the uh, one of our residents in rehab. She's there actually for re uh, rehab after a stroke, but she also has recovered from COVID herself. But she shared with me the other yesterday that um, her 40 year old nephew um, passed away from COVID, leaving a wife and three children behind. Um, now he had underlying conditions, but um, but yeah, this this COVID thing is real. People are are dying from it. Um, we want to so we really want to pray for a swift end to this. Um, so let's uh, let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you hear us when we pray. You desire to answer our prayers, to bring about your good in the world, and that you provide your Holy Spirit, that the heavens open up and your Holy Spirit descends, to give us boldness to do your good work in the world. Uh, and we, we want to hear clearly from your spirit so that we know uh, how to proceed and what to do to touch others' lives and to see a change uh, for good happen. 
Lord, we specifically pray for scientists and doctors as they work to find a vaccine for this COVID crisis. Uh, we pray for those who've lost lives, there for their families, those who are, are left behind, that they might be comforted and feel your presence with them. Uh, and Lord, we pray for a, a swift end to, to COVID and that a vaccine will be found soon. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we normally have uh, higher numbers join. Usually we have like eight people join. Today was just um, three people. But thank you for joining. Uh, maybe more will watch this later. Um, I'm really thinking that um, instead of continuing on in leadership, that next next week I'd kind of like to start maybe doing a, um, a, a study on the Lord's Prayer. So... Um, I'll be praying about that and see kind of where the Holy Spirit guides and directs as to what's a good good path for our next Bible study. We might stay with leadership one more week, but I'll I'll see. So, all right. Well, have a good afternoon. Thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you later. Be blessed. Keep keep trusting in God and and love loving other people in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Bye.